And I think we're good. Oh, I didn't switch my screen over here. It's so annoying because I got to see what I'm seeing. You're like, wait, there's nobody there. I'm here. I'm here. Trust me, I'm here. There we go. Look, here I am. Good morning, everybody. I'm just doing my morning dance to uh, arrange my windows so that I can see all the good stuff. Uh, let me uh, just make sure I've got audio on the stream here. And I do. I just have to like look at one of the web broadcasts and see what you're seeing. So let me get my windows all situated here. I almost had enough time. I was like this close. Uh, Facebook. All right. We are now live on all three platforms. So thanks for stopping in. Um, for those who don't know, I actually stream on three. I'm on uh, YouTube and Facebook and on uh, Twitch. And uh, if you look down like this area right down in here, you'll see all my socials and they're also in my about page on Twitch and uh, at the uh, description of the stream on uh, YouTube and Facebook. So they're there if you need to find them for some reason. You want to go to my uh, Instagram or my Twitter or my YouTube or Facebook or whatever. It's all there. So um, I will say that on my YouTube stream, um, I actually have a playlist of all the previous um, all the previous live streams that I've done. This is episode 56. So there's quite a few of them in there. Um, but all of them are listed in a, place, a, a playlist on my YouTube channel. And if you wanted to go back and see something or other, you know, feel free to drop back in there. Because um, I do this three times a week, so there are quite a few of them in there. Uh, I don't know if Facebook actually has them all. If you can go back in and find them on Facebook, I'm not sure if they do. Twitch does not because I'm not a... Uh, I'm not a partner on Twitch, so they, I think they only save like the last five on Twitch, which is fine. Um, people go to Twitch to watch live content, necess not necessarily old content, so um, I, I get that. And uh, But it, like I said, they're, they're, they're archived on YouTube, absolutely, in a playlist. So you can just go there, check it out. I do have the chat windows open, so if you want to pop in, say, hey, you know, ask a question, tell me I'm using the wrong sandpaper, whatever the case is. Um, feel free, just be nice, that's all I ask. Be nice in your comments because, you know, I have feelings, they get hurt. Not really, um, but we would hate to ban you from my streams. I've never had to do that, except for bots. I do ban the bots. Um, all right, what's going on in my shop? Uh, well, I always usually talk about what I did between the last stream and this stream, because there's a day in between those usually, or a whole weekend. But um, this was uh, last Wednesday. I started the process of finishing up uh, the bases. And to finish up, what I mean is that all the sanding has been done. All of the little detail stuff is done, and it's time to actually put some stain or some oil or whatever on the particular bases to make them look lovely. And I've started that process. I think on stream, I only did one on stream last week because it was the easiest one to do, which was an oil. Let me grab one of those and I'll show you. So I did an oil stain, or not an oil stain, duh. I didn't do a stain. I did a uh, Danish oil. Let me find a really cool, this one's really cool looking. I have them set on a uh, little stands over here so they could dry appropriately. But um, let me move this out of the way for the moment. Um, make sure I do not lock my laptop off. I almost dumped my laptop the other day. That would have been a crying occasion. I can tell you that right now. So this is walnut with a dark walnut Danish oil applied to it. And let me see if my fourth camera is up here. Is it up? It is up. So you can see that looks gorgeous. That's all there is. There's no, no stain used on here or anything else. It's just a, uh, a, a Danish oil. And I apply it liberally. I did a couple of coats. Um, once you get the color on here, it, uh, it doesn't actually make it darker with additional coats. 
you just basically get more protection. Uh, Danish oil has a varnish in it, so that soaks into the wood and provides some, some internal protection for the fibers themselves. Um, you can actually build up a Danish oil coat on these if you wanted to. You could do three coats, four coats if you wanted to, and it would have built up a little bit of a finish on the top. Um, but I'm going to be doing a lacquer coat on top of these, so I don't have a need to do that. So a couple of, couple of, of coats on there is all I need, and this is ready to roll. Uh, the, the book match, I'm so happy with the way the book match tops on these turned out because I, I'm trying to get it so you can actually see a nice, pretty, there you go. I mean, these turned out really pretty and they look really nice sitting in the base like that. Um, this, this is going to be, somebody's going to love this. Um, now remembering of course that I charge more for walnut because walnut costs more for me to buy and uh, or at least usually costs more for me to buy, especially if it's premium walnut like this was. So I do charge more for that, but I have three of these, which is kind of cool. I mean, I don't, I don't upcharge like, oh, it's $50 more because it's walnut. No, it's, it's not like that. Um, but like say if this was a, a cherry base with the, the side compartment and the logo, I think I might charge 125 for that in cherry. Um, in Walnut, it would be 135. So it's like a $10 upcharge for the, uh, for the price difference in the wood. But you know, it, it does cost me more. And so in order to not eat up my profit margin, I have to raise the price on the premium woods. Um, I don't use a lot of premium woods. <coughs> Typically, um, Walnut gets an upcharge. Um, and then things like Sapili. A mahogany. Um, those are those are my main upcharge ones. I don't use a lot of other um, uh, premium woods, if you will. Um, if I did one in like Babinga or Wingate or something like that, it would definitely be a higher charge because those, if you watched my last episode, I took a trip to the hardwood store and I kind of showed some of the exotic import woods. Like if I made one in zebra wood, Holy mackerel, would this thing be expensive? It'd be like a $200 base if I made it out of uh, uh, zebra wood, because that stuff was $20 a board foot. That's a lot. So you're not going to see me making one of these out of zebra. Maybe if I get a request or something, but um, anywho. Um, so yeah, these are premium. They get a premium price, but that's okay, because most people identify that as, you know, hey, these are really nice. Now. Another thing that I did was finish this base right here. Now this was a cherry base right here. And it looks, if you look and color wise, it looks pretty darn similar to the base underneath it, right? Um, let's see if I can, I mean, if you look at the colors, not too far off, right? Um, darkness and everything else, this is cherry. So this cherry base right here, I finished this one. Um, this is beautiful grain on here. I'm really happy with the way this turned out as well. Um, I love the grain on cherry. It's such a great wood to work with. And if you pick really nice pieces that have some beautiful grain to them, um, these always are good sellers for me because they're just lovely. And I use this stain right here called Kona. So that's the uh, stain I use on this. This is just a regular, I guess this is an oil-based stain. Um, but it's, uh, it's kind of nice. It's like dries in one hour, achieves color in one coat. So really you only have to put one coat on here. You don't have to do multiple coats of this kind of stain. Um, and and I, that's why I really like using it. it it's, uh, you can get it in the Varathane or uh, I think Rust-Oleum, but they're, this, they're both the exact same stain in Kona. Um, Rust-Oleum owns Varathane, so it's just different branding, but it's the exact same stuff. Uh, but it's really beautiful. You can't use the Kona on everything. I've tried some different woods, and for whatever reason, I think on the cherry, it just gives me a dark color, but I get a little bit of the warmth of the cherry that comes through, so it's, it doesn't come out as a, a pale brown. It comes out more of a warm brown and kind of reminds me a lot of the walnut. So. 
There you go. So those are two. I had three of these. So all of the uh, all of the walnuts got their their Danish oil. I have one cherry base, and that's this one, and it obviously got its stain. Um, so what else? Let me park these back to the side. I'll go get you a couple others to see. Now, here's the thing. These have to sit, especially the Danish oil ones. They have to sit for a while because I need that oil to cure. Um, it does not it does not get a top coat until that oil has had plenty of chances to cure. They say in the instructions 72 hours. I usually wait a little longer than that before I start putting lacquer on because um, I, I just want to be sure that it is completely cured. And all that oil that has soaked in has done its job and will not affect the top coat. So I usually wait a little bit longer. Uh, this is a sycamore and it's a quarter sawn sycamore. So quarter sawn sycamore has really crazy gorgeous grain. I'm going to get the side cam here so you can get a, a nice look at the grain on this and see. So that's what quarter sawn sycamore looks like. It is, it is very cool. Um, you just, it's crazy looking. It's kind of like lace wood or leopard wood. Um, so it kind of has that feel to it. Uh, this has already had a tongue oil finish put on top of it. Um, tongue oil finish, much like a Danish oil, is a blend of tongue oil and varnish. So very similar to a Danish oil. Um, the difference being that the, I think the Danish oil is like a mix of a couple different type of oils, whereas this is tongue oil and varnish mixed together. Uh, the big difference is if you go to buy them, look at the actual name. If it says tongue oil finish, that means it has a varnish in it. If it just says tongue oil, well then it's just tongue oil. So I always get the, 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 uh, the finish with the varnish in there. Um, the thing about this is you need to coat it and then wipe it down and then let it dry for 24 hours before you do a second coat. Uh, so these, I've got two of these. I've got a shorty like this, which is just the compartment. And then I've got a larger one, uh, which is right here that has the side compartment on it. And it has a nice, lovely lid right here. So these have been sitting um, all day. I did these yesterday, wiped them down. They've been sitting all day. And they are now ready for a second coat. And I will do that today as well. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll do this again. Um, the thing about this stuff is it gets a little, like, it's just a little tacky. Not tacky. Um, what do I want to say? Like dust nibs. Like you can just feel a little bit of like dust and such on here. Uh, so what I do is I've got a uh, sanding pad somewhere around here. Um, my sanding pad uh, over here. So I've got a sanding pad right here. And this has 320 on there. And I'd rather have 400, but I'm out of 400 for in the stuff that fits on the sanding pad. But anyway, all I will do with this is just lightly rub this. I mean, there's almost no pressure on there, but it just knocks down the little dust nibs and makes this super smooth. You can just go around the corners. You don't want to remove the finish. You just want to knock off those little dust nibs. And I mean, you can, you can feel the difference. Like it's like just a little bit, a little bit of texture there. But when I just gently rub this back and forth, and like I said, almost no pressure, but now that is like silky smooth. And that's all I want to do is just get rid of those little dust nibs before we do our second coating on here. Um, whoo, that feels nice. That feels really nice now. And then the other thing is, you know, I just get the flat surfaces. <clears throat> like this. I'm not looking to sand. I'm just looking to knock off the dust nibs. I'm going to hit this little corner. There we go. Let's try this one. Corners here feel pretty good. And corners are tricky. Um, it's easy to blow through a, a top coat on a corner. Uh, mainly because when you're spraying a top coat or when you put a top coat on, it doesn't adhere to the corners as much because it's either running off this way or this way. The corners never have as much finish on them. Um, and that's always when 
like when I do a guitar body, the, the biggest fear I have is burning through the corner because there's the thinnest amount of finish and the thinnest amount of stain on those corners. So you gotta be really careful when you're sanding corners, but I'm just mostly just doing all the flat surfaces here. And that feels super smooth now. So in a few minutes when I get around to doing that, we can put some top coat on. This feels pretty good. Let me just kind of give this a little rub just to, and that feels super smooth now too. So we've got the lid for this one and we will get the tongue oil finish and do a second coat because like I said, it needs a second coat in order to, uh, in order to really, um, lock in that finish and that oil. Now it's very, very light colored. And I tried a whole bunch of, I tried a whole bunch of different stains and stuff on here for this and nothing uh, I could do really, really kind of got me excited. Um, it, it just, everything like it would blotch up. A lot of what you see here, this little lace effect or this leopard wood effect on here, this really cool grain, a lot of that, it, it soaks up any stain that you use, it soaks it up unevenly and you get like massive blotching in here. And I, I really did not want to get this blotchy. I also didn't want to have to use like a pre-stain conditioner. I could have tried it. I guess, I guess I should have tried the pre-stain, but you know, I did try a tongue oil finish on here, which is a natural looking finish. And I kind of like that. So these will just be light colored, but they'll have really cool grain. You can see the grain really easily. The nice thing about this kind of finish with the tongue oil and then I will lacquer over top of that is it adds a, um, a huge chatoyance to this grain effect. So it, it changes and you see it kind of moving around and stuff and it's really cool looking once it has that final lacquer coat on top of it. It just adds dimensionality to it. And so I think that looks really good. It's kind of like a, a figured maple in that respect. So anyway, I think we will avoid the, uh, the, the color. We're just going to keep it a natural. It, it is, the tongue oil has a little bit of an amber to it. So it does add just a little hint of amber to this, which is fine. I think the amber looks really good. But anyway, we're going to leave that as is. And what we're going to do now, let me move things around a little bit more. So what we're going to do now is we are going to tackle these bases right here. This is a um, quarter sawn red oak. Now I usually use quarter sawn white oak, but I got a batch of quarter sawn red oak, so I was making some 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 bases out of this, and it's very rough right now because what I did was I took a paper towel, got it moist, and just ran it. It had already been sanded to 220. And I took the paper towel, got it moist, not soppy wet, just moist, and then wet the surface of the wood. And I did that to raise the grain. Because even though you sanded it smooth, a little bit of moisture on there makes the grain kind of stand up, kind of wakes up that grain. And then you can just take another really fine grit sandpaper, knock it over there. That'll knock that grain back down. And then when I use this first coat that I'm going to use, which is a water-based uh, color coat, it's a water-based stain, it will not raise the grain after that. Once you've raised the grain once, it's, it's raised and you knock it down and it won't raise again. So I wet this down and I'm going to sand it really quickly. And then once I sand it, uh, it'll be ready for, for this first coat of dye stain. And this is, I, I've talked about this before, so I'm going to do something called a trace coat, but it's different than the trace coats I've done in the past. So in the past on figured maple, I've done a trace coat where I take a dye stain because um, getting the color over top of it is, is kind of weird. You can't really get color to pop, but you want the figure to pop. So I take a dye stain and you rub the dye stain over top of it and you then you sand it off. You take sandpaper and you sand off. You're sanding off the surface wood so the dye stays in the figure in the areas because basically figure is changes in the grain direction. And so where it's more open, the dye soaks in. Where it's more closed on top, that gets sanded off. And then it, basically what it does is it accentuates the figure in the wood and you really make it pop. That's called trace coating. Um, this trace coat is a little different. I'm going to, um, 
get a YouTube notification. Thank you, I don't need that. Um, I'm going to put a dye stain on top of this, on this raw wood, and then I'm gonna leave it on there. I'll, I'll wipe it, I'll get it all soaked in, then I'm just gonna wipe it off with a paper towel, and I'm gonna leave all of the color on the top and in the grain. So I'm not gonna sand it, which is the different part, right? Because um, normally I would sand that off and then either do you know, a top coat on top or something else if this was maple. But because this is oak, I'm going to do a top or a, uh, a coating of this dye stain. And it's this stuff right here. It's called uh, Lockwood's Early American Maple Golden Amber. It looks super dark um, and it goes on kind of dark, but it's actually a like a very golden, yellow golden color. The reason I'm going to do that is that there is uh, medullary rays that run through this. The medullary, medullary rays are really cool looking and they add a lot of character, but they, they are very hard to see without the stain and stuff on top of them. And not all stains accentuate those medullary rays. So what happens is when you do this dye stain on top, it goes in and soaks in and it colors those medullary rays so they get like a nice golden color. But the medullary rays are actually very closed grain, so it doesn't soak in around those medullary, or it soaks in around them, it does not soak in totally on there. Then what I will do is I'll take a, once that's dry, I'll take a wood stain. This is American Walnut. I did some tests with some different types. This is kind of like a medium brown stain. This is just a regular stain. It's the same as this Kona stain that I use, right? So it's the one coat, one, uh, uh, one coat color. I will put this on over top of that dried dye stain and then uh, wipe it down and that will give me color. This color, the dark color, will be all in the open areas of the grain and color it really well and make it kind of a medium brown, but those it won't soak into those medullary rays because they're kind of closed grain, so those areas will not get as much of that top stain. And hopefully the effect will be something that looks really cool. That's what I'm going for. This is kind of a technique that was used um, on old, a lot of old cabinets and such from sewing machines and things like that, and furniture in general in the 1800s, like the mid to late 1800s, early 1900s, they used a lot of quarter sawn white oak, um, in furniture making and it, basically because of the medullary rays. So you only get this effect when you quarter saw the wood. And in order for them to make their wood go longer, they did a lot of veneers. And so you'll see a lot of, uh, a lot of the, um, what am I trying to say? A lot of furniture and such that had these quarter sawn um, veneers with the medullary rays and they would use these different techniques where they would stain them and then they would top coat them with a different color stain to give them a darker, richer color. And it would be basically kind of give them this really cool effect. And I, I tell you what, I, I let me, um, let me do something here because I want to show you what I'm, what I'm after here. I'm going to walk over to the computer and pull something up on screen on my screen and then I will bring it over to your screen. It just takes me a minute to find it here. So let me, uh, let me go in here and just do a search real quick for um, quarter song white oak. Uh, we're going to say furniture. Furniture. And I'm going to pull up my images. And I just want to see if I can find some samples of what this stuff really looks like. And that's pretty cool. So let me, um, let me switch back to here and see if I can pull up my web share. And the window capture is, uh, hang on a second, browser. And I just have to choose the, oh, I don't want that. Hang on. I need this. So let me go in here and there we go. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to bring the mouse over here so you can, but you can see this now. Uh, hopefully you can see this. 
is a, uh, uh, an example of some furniture that is made with quarter sawn wood. And let me, uh, I gotta go into the window here. Boom, there we go. All right, and I'm gonna just take a peek at one of these streams that I'm showing you just to make sure that you can see it. And you can, okay. So if you look on this, um, you look at all the little kind of light parts there. So you've got a, basically a, a medium, kind of warm brown, but then you've got these lighter streaks and stuff in here. Let's see if we get any other, there you go. There's a good example right there. Notice right here on the legs, right here on the face, that is all quarter sawn. That's quarter sawn white oak. And those stripes and things that you see are medullary rays. And it's, um, you notice in the lighter colors here, it doesn't show up, uh, but it does show up and you can see it in the side up here. Uh, so here's a really good example right here. All the face on here, that is all done with the um, stuff. Now this is kind of hard to see. I mean, it just depends. The table here, it kind of shows it. They did not pop this for the grain. So this is all done with one stain. So you don't get the, you don't get the color changes, the, the, the phase changes in the color um, that you get from something else. Like, look at this. This is really cool looking. This really shows off what those medullary rays look like. This is a really good example of what quarter sawn wood looks like when it gets finished. Um, it's not the traditional color. Um, this is more of a traditional but anyway, um, let me see, that may be, well, there's another one. This is done in a really light color, but you can still see where those, like, look at the medullary rays. This one had some big medullary rays on there, and uh, it's a really pretty cabinet. Um, anyway, so hopefully that gives you an idea. There's another one. This is very traditional color, uh, especially from, like, the mid-1800s through the early 1900s. That would be a very traditional quarter sawn white oak kind of look. So anyway... There you go. There's another one right there. That's the effect I'm after. And let me go back to this one. There we go. And then I change back here so I can see. So that's the effect I'm after. And hopefully that gives you an idea of what we're trying to achieve with this particular finish. Uh, we we want to contrast between the color that we're going to put on top, which is this this medium uh, or medium brown American walnut, we want to contrast between that and the golden colors underneath that are going to accentuate those medullary rays. So that's kind of what we're after. That was actually, I, I, sorry I didn't have that set up earlier. I just thought of it when I was sitting here going, you know, I could show them. Um, so the first thing we need to do, I've already, like I said, I already wet this down and I need to knock that, uh, I need to knock that down right now um, because uh, it's very rough when you when you take a uh, uh, a wet towel and you rub it down. Like like I said, you don't soak it; you just moisten it. But that grain just stands up like a porcupine. So we need to knock that down before we can go on and do this this first coating. So I'm just going to take this 300, and it doesn't require a lot of heavy sanding. I'm going to do it over here so I don't have to get it on my computer and stuff. But it doesn't require a heavy sanding. It's just a really light standing, and I can just use your fingers to, to gauge. But that's really the only pressure it takes, just like that. Um, anywhere where there's ingrain, you want to make sure you get that addressed. Right here. And all I'm doing is knocking that ingrain down, or that, that standing up rough stuff. And that feels really nice. And the reason, like I said, is that Lockwoods that I use is a water-based stain. So if I didn't do this now, um, what would happen is that would basically raise the grain and then it would be a really rough surface. If I was doing the type of uh, coat where I would be sanding off the top of it, that wouldn't matter. But because I'm not going to be sanding this again, I need to pre-raise that grain before I go any further because that will make all the difference. It's amazing how just a little swipe with the sandpaper in that raised grain just feels smooth as can be. And that's basically it. That's all I'm going to do. Now I need to do the top. Because I did wipe these areas down and I want them to feel the same. Because I took a lot of time to get these sanded smooth, right? So 
You don't want a little moisture to ruin the whole thing. It feels good. And then sometimes on these edges, because you want them to just, just check the whole thing with your fingers as you're going. You'll, you'll feel the difference. But that's really all it takes to kind of smooth things out and get this ready. Now, the other thing I might do is hit this with my vacuum just to kind of clear some of that out, get that dust out of there. So let me grab my vacuum and I actually have the dust brush on here like this. And I'm just going to turn this on and dust it off really quick. Okay, that is all that's required. So now let's uh, switch over to, what do we want, this camera? We'll go to this camera right here. So we're gonna switch over to this camera and that gives you a, a, a little bit better view of what I'm gonna be doing with this. Um, I had, I definitely use gloves because this is a dye stain, which means it will dye your fingers with whatever color you're using and you don't want to be running around with golden maple fingers, that is for sure. Um, I don't remember where I got this from. Like I said, I saw this in a magazine, in a wood magazine, they had this color combination. They actually used uh, gun stock, but uh, as the top coating color. I thought the gun stock was a little light, so I got this medium brown. But I found this, this Lockwoods is really, re it's a powder and I just got a jelly jar and mixed it up in there. But um, I think I got it on Amazon is where I found it. Or actually it wasn't Amazon. I just looked it up and did a YouTube search and found it at some wood supply place that was kind of, I'd never heard of before, but they sent it to me and that was all I needed. That's all I needed. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get some paper towels ready here because I'm gonna also have to wipe this off. So let me just grab a couple of paper towels. I'm getting low on paper towels here. I've got another roll. Uh, I love these blue paper towels. I think these are the best if you do woodworking and such and staining or whatever. Um, these blue Scott shop towels, so much better than just a regular paper towel. Um, they're soft, they're absorbent. I use them for pretty much all my staining and such. So blue shop towels. All right, I've got this one right here. I'm gonna fold this up and make an applicator pad. I had one already, but it's pretty much worn out and used. So I'm gonna send it into the garbage dump here real quick. Uh, the nice thing about this stuff, you don't have to let it dry before you throw it away. It's not gonna spontaneously combust. It's a water product. So there's no oil or anything involved. So you can just toss it in the garbage. Like I said, be really careful with them because um, they are, they're stain and they will, whatever they touch, they will make a mess. All right, I've got a, a board right here. This board actually has pins in it um, that I punched in there with my pin nailer. And so it just gives me a raised, so when I'm done with the bottom, I can set it on there and it gets air underneath. So it's just a little bit of a raised platform. But I'm gonna start with the bottom and then I'll do the sides and then I'll do the insides and I'll just have it setting on those pins. I'm going to start with the bottom. I'm going to dip this in the uh, in the jar here, get it soaked up. Now, some people will actually prepare pads where they'll take a cotton t-shirt and ball it up, and then they'll wrap it in another piece of cotton t-shirt and make a, an applicator pad. I just use a paper towel. Um, the reason they would use an applicator pad is because they want it to last because they'll be doing multiple coats and the paper towel will fall apart after a while. So uh, I get that, but because I'm just doing this one coat on here, um, I'm not gonna be doing multiple coats and I don't really need something that's gonna stand up over time. So, but you can see what I'm doing is I'm just running this along the wood on the bottom here. Doesn't require a whole lot of skill. Um, and it, you're like, oh, it's really dark in places. Don't worry, it all just kind of evens out after a while. Um, the big thing I find is that 
some of this grain is actually hard to penetrate. You'll find little areas that are not affected and you need to kind of go back over them and rub it in so that it really kind of gets into all the grain areas. And uh, that's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and do these, these hand holds um, just because it's probably easier at this point. Um, and usually what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of the, the paper towel applicator and squeeze out the product into the corners. And that uh, fills in those hard to reach areas. There we go. Uh, get off of there. And if you get some on the sides or whatever, don't worry. It, it's once you cover over the whole thing, it's you're fine. There's another area that didn't get done right there. So just try to get any little little areas that did not get any stain. Trying to soak this into this one spot. Um, also, if you've got if you've got some glue in some spots, well, guess what? You're not going to get stain on them because they are not compatible. Um, when I get done, I'm just going to take another paper towel like this. And then I'm just going to wipe off the excess because what's in the wood is in the wood now. I don't need this stuff that's on the surface. And you can see I'm going to pull a lot of it off the surface here. But I only care about what went into the wood. <clears throat> it has done its thing. Once the dye is soaked into the wood, you don't need to worry about anything else here. It's, it's pretty much in there. And uh, I'm just going to flip this over. Now this is not like using a regular stain. I mean, it just, you're just basically wiping the moisture off the wood at this point. So, all right, moving on, I'm going to uh, basically do the same operation, but I'm going to do it on the sides now. And uh, get this wet with lots of product. And then we just kind of just start laying it in just like this. Now this stuff looks really dark when it goes on. Um, it dries lighter than this. And uh, make sure you get it in all the areas. I'm just going to go down the side here. I do find sometimes I have success if I go across the grain. I go with it and across it. And that just I'm just trying to get it worked into the pores as best as I can. In fact, this one did not. Sometimes you go back and hit them again. But anyway, I'm just getting it worked into the pores. That's all I'm doing. So you can see. Just like that. And you can see it, it has a nice amber color. This stuff, it, when it dries, it kind of gets pale looking. It doesn't look as good as it does when it's wet, but that actually changes once you put another coat on top of it, like a, a top coat or something that completely changes it. But hopefully what you can see is now you can see those medullary rays really starting to pop out because they don't soak in as much of the dye stain. So hopefully you can see that. They don't soak in as much of the dye stain as the wood surrounding them. And that's kind of what we're after here is to get those things to really pop out. And then I'm going to go get this last side here. And you saw there was like a splotch right there. It doesn't matter because once, once it soaks into all the wood, it'll all even out. So just kind of I might get a little bit more on here. Now I probably could have put some of this in a little cup or something, but uh, it's not too bad. I can get most of it out of that. Uh, I'm going to do just a little bit more on this face right here because I really want it to get soaked into, and there's a lot of little, little tiny trace areas in the grain that don't soak any up. I'm not sure why that is, but that's okay. We're just going to get this all in here as best we can. And then I'm going to wipe this down. And then, uh, let's see, do I got a clean area on here? So let me start with the other side here and just start wiping this off. Like I said, all I'm doing now is taking color off the top. 
what's soaked in is in and it's not going anywhere. Unless I sanded this thing, that, that color is there to stay. And then in a second, I'll bring this over and show you a little bit closer on the, uh, on the screen what I'm <clears throat> going after here and the effect that it has. Let me get another thing here. Let's get this wiped off. Ooh, there was a lot on there. That's the one I just finished. And this side right here. I do have a little spot that I missed up on the corner here. There's no problem finding out places you missed. They will pop out and be very, very uh, obvious to you once you're going. All right. So I've got the sides done here. I'm going to bring this over and just show you a little bit better. Hopefully you can see now, um, you can see those medullary rays and how they pop out now. Um, look at this. Look, there you go. There's a good view. So those are the medullaries. They look pretty lovely. Oh, there's a good view right there. Look at that. Um, and that's, that's what we're after is that effect right there. So you can see this has it going all the way around. It's really very lovely. And then um, I got to do the insides. So I'm going to just set this on the, uh, on the little pins there. And grab my applicator pad and then we're going to do the inside. I mean, I do the plywood on the bottom. I mean, it doesn't really matter. But I figure if, since I'm staining, I'll just stain all the way. So I do the plywood along the bottom. Because the, the thing is, it's, it's hard not to get stain on the plywood if you're getting it in the corners of the wood. You're going to get it on the plywood at the bottom anyway, so you might as well just go all out and stain the bottom too. Um, the nice thing about the paper towel is when I get in these corners, I can just give it a squeeze and it pushes, you know, moisture out of the pad and into the wood so that I don't have to struggle. Like if you're using a brush, sometimes it's much harder, but here there's so much loaded into the, the pad um, that it makes it really easy. The other thing is on areas like this, you'll notice you'll have some dark places where the where the stain got there first, and then by the time you come back, that's much darker. It doesn't matter, it evens out. Once you start applying it all over, it all evens out. So don't worry if you've got some dark spots to start with. Um, once it's soaked in around there, it'll all be good. So I'm just gonna try to get all the joints here, around here. So I'm just trying to get it in all the corners in the little corners that come up from the uh, the corner supports. And then I'll start hitting the sides. Like I said, this is really simple stuff. It's not, this part is super easy. Actually, the whole thing is easy. It just takes time. But you, you the big thing is you want to get it really coated in this dye stain so that it's getting into the pores as best as possible. I'm going to get a little bit more on here for this last long side. And then we will do the uh, tops of the supports and the, the top areas around here. Now you can see there's a lot of like little splotches and stuff around the side. They will all even out when I apply the stain around the top. So no worries about that. Because remember, it just hadn't had a chance to soak in. Um, I will get this in the corner and just kind of squeeze, squeeze stain out, squeeze this dye into those corners. And that loads up that, that area there and makes it a lot easier. When you have to do that with a brush, it's kind of hard. But here, there's so much liquid stored in the paper towel that just kind of floods on there. All right, and then the last part here, I'm just going to go over the top like this. Make sure I get all the top done. And this will all even out in just a moment. Um, all of that area of the wood gets evened out and it all, so you don't see any dark spots anymore because it's all even now. So I used to freak out about that. I was like, oh my God, it's so uneven. And then I would notice, I'm like, oh, it's all good. 
All right. So that's the whole process there. Um, I need to get another paper towel and um, let me wake up the screen here. Um, so I'm going to get my paper towel here and I'm going to wipe off the, the excess. Remember, I'm just removing the excess. It's already, once it's in the wood, this just takes the stuff off the surface. Uh, now, the thing is, I can't, I can't do anything else with this until that has dried. Now, because it's a, a water-based, it dries pretty quickly, um, but you got to make sure it is dry before you go to the next step. Now see right here, I see a little spot where it just didn't soak in as much. So come back and hit that. Now that may have been that there was just a little bit of glue on that spot. Um, I would not be surprised. I mean, sometimes you get just a little bit of a, a glue swipe or something on there. And it's hard to notice while you're just working with the raw wood. But as soon as you put a finish on it, it's like, hello. All right. And... Let me wipe off these top areas here. Now what I'm going to do is set this off to the side and I'm going to let this dry. I've got a fan actually blowing over here. Um, but I've got another base that I've already, I've already treated and it should be dry and ready for the next step. So we can, it's, I kind of feel like a, a cooking show, you know, where it's like, oh, well, here, I've already prepared this one. Um, you can see that there's some dark spots and stuff in here. That's where it's just a little bit wetter than the areas surrounding it. Like this is a good example right here. You can see where you've got this dark patch in here. That's okay. That's going to dry evenly. It just looks because it's not part of it's drier than the other part. Once it dries completely, um, you're not going to notice any difference. So let me clean up my towels here and throw them away so I can keep that. I'm going to put this over on my little drying pins and set that in front of the fan. I'm going to bring this one over. But first, I'm going to close this because if this spills, uh, it's a sad day and I'm going to put it away in the cabinet because I no longer need this stuff, but it is great. I love that Lockwood stuff. All right. Okay. My hands are dry now, I think. Let me just Make sure I don't have any stain on them because I don't want to restain this thing. Okay. So now this is a dried version of what we just did. So it has been sitting in the, uh, in the fan. It has been drying and it appears to be completely dry. Pretty sure it's completely dry. Hang on a second, I'm going to stick it in the fan here and see something. Yeah, it's dry. So, um, I'm just going to come over here and show you. So, it, it kind of dries to a, a chalkier looking finish, but you can see the medullary rays on there, how they are very well defined now, right? So, very well defined. And then um, the, the next step is, uh, and the bottom just looks bleh, but who cares, right? Same with the inside. But in order to take this to the next level, we have to basically now apply a top coat that will, um, that will give us the exact result that we want. Um, I think... And I'm not sure if this is the deal. I am going to take this and set it in front of my fan over here for a minute. And before we get to this, I'm going to do a, uh, I'm just setting it right in front of the fan just to make sure those interior areas are getting clean. I'm going to go ahead and grab my tongue oil finish right here, tongue oil. And I'm going to just give these, uh, sycamores a wipe down with the tongue oil again while I'm waiting to ensure that that uh, that other oak is completely dry. It was just looking to me on the insides like there was just maybe a couple of areas that weren't quite dry and 
we want that to be completely dry. So we will move on for the time being. Um, tell you what, actually I have right here, I have some little pyramids, right? So little pyramids, set these up so that I can have a place to set this. I'm gonna just align them in the corners here a little bit. There we go. All right, so I got a place to put this. Um, get this stuff ready. I'm gonna need some more paper towels. And I usually pour this stuff into a cup because it's much easier than trying to pour it onto your towel. It's easier for me to grab some out of here with a, an applicator. Um, I'm gonna get some more towels ready though. I'm going to need to open up my other package because I think this is the last of the towels. And it is. That's okay. It's enough for what we need to do at this very moment. Here. Here. All right. Um, this stuff, you have to kind of move quickly with this stuff because it, it does, I find it has a tendency to get gummy if you wait too long to wipe it off and you don't want it to be gummy <laughs> because then it, it's, it's like really hard and you can't get it off. It's like, oh, I can't get it off. So move quick, go fast, get it done, wipe it off and then move on. I don't do the whole thing and wipe it off. I, I wipe it off in sections, but I'm just soaking up some tongue oil in here, and I'm just gonna slather this stuff on. Now it should go on pretty easily because like I said, this has already had one single coat on here. So I'm not looking to go crazy with this. I'm just top coating this whole thing with another layer. And that actually, yeah, it went much faster than before. I'm gonna get it in the corners here. Same thing, you know, it's just easier if you have a little bit of product in your towel that you can squeeze it out and get into tough corners. You basically just squeeze a pool of it out and then it, it makes it a lot easier. Um, and this stuff, I find that the sycamore is very thirsty. Um, it soaks in really quickly to that sycamore. But I'm gonna set this pad aside and I'll just set it right there. And I'm just gonna get a towel and just wipe this off really quick. Cause like I said, it's already been soaked in. I'm just putting another coat on top. Um, so I'm just gonna wipe it just like this. Just wiping off the excess so it doesn't soak in. We're just getting that layer to soak in. Whatever doesn't soak, that's fine. We're just gonna wipe off. But this sycamore is really thirsty, so it kinda really drinks it up. Most of, most of this stuff came off of the plywood. Um, all right, now I've got it off of there. I'm gonna go ahead and just start doing the sides. Just get a little bit more on here. Just do the sides really quickly. Make sure you get those corners. Okay, and this side. And you can usually see if you've got a very uh, thirsty wood, you'll see where it, there's areas where it, it looks like it's dry because it's actually soaked in more than the surrounding areas. Not dry though, just uh, just very thirsty. All right. Oh, and there goes my son to work. Did he leave on time? I don't know. I don't even know what time it is. Yeah, he's leaving on time. All right, I'm gonna wipe it off here. And like I said, if you wipe this stuff off earlier, it's kind of a, it's tricky. You wait too long and it will, it will get tacky and tacky is hard to wipe off. So I usually like to get at it a little bit earlier, but that looks pretty good. I still have to do the back side or the front side. I'm not sure which is which. Just get a little bit more, get a nice coat on here. 
and I don't know if you can see, but it does have a little bit of an amber color to it. Um, so it's not completely changing the color of the wood, but it just does add some warmth to it, which is, I kind of like that. It's not quite as blonde as it was. That's on really smooth, which means my first coats did a really good job of soaking in and applying a nice finish. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe this off. Okay. All righty. That's basically all I need to do for the outside. It looks good. Now I can put it on my pyramids here. And I'm going to go ahead and do the interior. And I just flood it into the, uh, into those areas on the, uh, the bottom here, the plywood, cause it's plywood. We don't care too much about the plywood, but what I do care about is the sides here. So make sure we get all the sides done. More. Get all these corner pieces done, the tops. And then uh, you could apply, uh, this actually says just two coats. So this is my second coat. And then you could leave it as is, you could wax it, <clears throat> or you could put a top coat on, which is what I'm gonna do. Um, but you've got options at this point depending on what you want to do. I'm going to squeeze some into these, onto these little supports here. It's going to soak into those pretty well because that's all in grain. In grain is like a thirsty straw. All right. I'm going to go, I think I got a clean side here. I think I do. There we go. All right. And we're just going to start wiping this stuff off. Um, it does leave a little bit of a sheen on here, which is nice. Um, like I said, it's not really necessary for what we're doing, but you can, if this is, this was your only step, you can absolutely, um, just use the tongue oil finish and, um, it's, it's a really nice protective finish. It's not going to be as nice as something on top, like a poly or like, you know, like I use the lacquer. It's not going to give you that, that top um, protection, but it does give you a, like I say, soaked in protection. So things like, you know, if you have water that spills on it or something like that, it's not going to soak into the wood and ruin your, your project. So that's, that's where it kind of comes in handy. And then you can always put like a paste wax finish over top of it. So just basically get like a Johnson's paste wax or something, some other type of, of wood paste wax and doing a nice paste wax finish over top of it. And that always looks really nice too. All right. So this one is done and uh, it looks really good. Now I probably need to hold it with this because I'm getting, I've got a little bit of stuff on my hands. So I'm going to try to keep my hands off of this now. Um, and then bring the other one over because I have two of them, All right? So here's this one. I'm going to set this over to the side and then we're going to let it dry. And then once it dries, well, it's going to cure actually, because once it's cured, um, I can move on to the next portion, which is lacquering. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, I've got two pieces here to do. So I've got this lid right here. So I'm going to do the lid first and I'm just going to take, I think I've got enough product on here that I'm just going to give this a nice, let me get a little bit more. Let's load this up with product and then we can wipe it off. And I, I'm looking for the areas where it, it, it's soaking in more and then I just add a little bit more to those particular areas. Some of these areas around the edges, like right here, for whatever reason, 
this area right here always seems to soak in a lot. So I'm trying to really get a lot of product right on this area right there. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna flip it over. I'm having trouble because, there we go. Because <laughs> I only have two hands and I need three sometimes. Sometimes my hair is driving me crazy today. Uh, hopefully, if anybody's talking, I can't see at the moment because my computer just went to sleep. So if you give me a minute, I will go wake it back up and check for comments and such. But uh, let me get this done. I would do that anyway. I think I can do this. Let me see. There we go. Oh, thank goodness, because, oh wait, there's no comments. <clears throat> but that's okay. That's usually when I get them is when I'm letting my guard down. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off this stuff here. I don't worry so much about the edges. I did the edges already. They're pretty much done. I'm not gonna worry about the edges. I worry about the face of these things. So I wanna get this cleaned off and smooth. And looking like that, that looks nice. Okay, flip it over and do this side. I'm just taking the excess off now that's built up on there. Um, I'm not gonna let this sit for like 15 minutes or whatever and then do it, because it, it just gets gummy. Um, at this point, I've got a nice layer inside, so just like this, Ooh, that looks so nice. And like this, there we go. So that's this one done. Um, kind of a really wild top for this one. Hopefully somebody likes this. I like it. So hopefully somebody likes it. If not, well, I'll give it to my daughter or something. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> my daughter, my wife, somebody will get this. I'd rather sell it <laughs> just because. But, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you, you try stuff and you think it looks cool and nobody else does. And that's just the way it goes. Um, I, I try sometimes being a woodworker, I like to play with different kinds of wood and stuff. And I think it looks absolutely awesome and nobody else does. <laughs> so I have to remember that I am not my customer. And uh, that's not always an easy thing to do. But I do know mostly what my customers like in terms of um, in terms of wood choices and things like that. Um, I, like I had, I've got another base that I made. It's really beautiful. It has uh, dovetail joints, and I I did um, contrasting wood where I've got walnut on the sides, or and in. Uh, figured maple on the front and back and stuff and I think it looks gorgeous and it's still sitting there for sale because you know what it's not everybody's cup of tea somebody even asked me like do you have one that's not like the contrasting woods I'd like just one in a plane like a, like the cherry or whatever I'm like oh, but that's boring <laughs> but I have to remember I am not my customer that is a hard thing to overcome sometimes because what I think looks beautiful and is like, oh, who wouldn't want that? Well, apparently everybody but me. So anyway, that's not true. I have sold two of them. So two people like them to that point, but I still have a third one that's just kind of sitting there and um, which is okay. I mean, I don't mind if inventory sits for a while because you know, somebody will, will love it. But I just thought it looked super cool. I was like, oh man, those things will sell out in like a day, man, they are not gonna last. Yeah, guess what, they lasted. <laughs> they lasted. So just a, a really important, important thing to remember, you are not your customer. So just because you like something does not mean it will go over big with your customer base. If you're, if you're making things for customers, I mean, that goes for making things for family and friends and stuff. You know, it, just because you think it looks cool, they may like, eh, gee, thanks, that's, that's awesome. You're like, but look, it's, how, it's got these contrasting woods and I did an inlay and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, yeah, thanks, I guess. Because you know what? Not everybody appreciates either the, the amount of work that you put into it or 
you know, the, the materials that you use, everything else, not everybody appreciates that or has an understanding of that. And so a lot of times, you know, those efforts go unheralded because, um, you know, you understand and you know, but they don't necessarily, they're just looking at it going, it looks okay. <laughs> like, no, but you don't understand. I worked so hard on this to make it beautiful. It looks nice. My kids are kind of like that. I'll, I'll like spend time making something and figuring it out and, you know, oh, the best thing in the world and blah, blah, blah. And then they get it and they're like, oh, oh, thanks, I guess. Yeah, it looks okay. Like, does it work well or whatever? And they're like, yeah, it's fine. Like, Damn it. <laughs> I'm not shooting for fine. I'm shooting for better than fine. But, you know, sometimes fine is all you get. And I'm fine with that, so. Because uh, <clears throat> like I said, I understand that not everybody is me. And I, a lot of times, have an appreciation for stuff that they would not. Um, it's like cutting boards. I've made a lot of cutting boards. They're great for giving away at Christmas and things like that. And I've done different, like, shapes and, and patterns and everything. And some of it is really not the easiest thing in the world to do. And you're like, and they get it and they're like, oh, it's a cutting board, great, thanks. And you're like, no, no, you don't understand. You don't understand how much work went into this. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a cutting board. It's just, you just glued wood together, right? I'm like, oh my God, no, it's more, it's so much more. Anyway, try to keep your, <laughs> keep your expectations low. Not everybody appreciates the work you do. I appreciate it though. Give stuff to woodworkers, they'll appreciate your stuff. All right, I'm gonna put this on here and then we're gonna do the inside. We're almost done here with these. Um, like I said, tongue oil is a super easy oil finish to use. Um, if you, a lot of people will use this uh, wood, uh, wood turners, people who turn stuff on a lathe, a lot of them will like to use a tongue oil finish. Um, uh, actually, one of my favorite finishes for for um, wood turning projects is a mix of um, boiled linseed oil, shellac, and what else? Uh, oh, and uh, denatured alcohol. So you kind of mix all those up, and there's some sort of like golden ratio of awesome. To mix that up but I mean it's really a simple thing you're just taking three of those things you mix them up and you put them on there and it's a really nice kind of a natural finish but it, it just you can make it super shiny and glossy and um, so like a lot of people who do bowls and pins and things like that that's one of the go-to finishes for that um, but yeah it's just boiled linseed oil which I use sometimes, I use boiled linseed oil on shop tools. So like uh, my little walnut mallet that I use um, or my tabletop, I, which actually needs to be sanded and get a new coat. Um, the nice thing about the boiled linseed oil is when it wears off, you just put another coat of it on and you're good to go. And the same with this stuff. You can recoat after a while if it tends to lose its awesomeness, you just recode it and start again. All right, I'm on the last sections here. I think. I think I did all the sides. I'm gonna hit them again just to be sure here. Just to make sure we get these covered. And looking good, which they are. I didn't do in the little corners. That's the one thing I need to do here. Let me get the corners. There we go, because these little corners, you don't want them soaking up any oils or anything when you put a machine in here. So this kind of just gives them protection as well. All right, that's that. I'm gonna set this cup over to the side for a minute and then I can wipe down this whole thing. I'm gonna wipe with this one. I'm going to use this one as a holder because it's just easier. And I'm trying to keep my fingers off of here now. All righty. 
I mean, unfortunately, you don't get the full effect when you're watching on camera um, because this, this stuff really does look really pretty in person. It, it, there's a, like I said, there's a chatoyance, which is kind of a, it's a, that's a gemologist's word for like jewelry makers would talk about a, 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 a rock, a stone, a, a gem having chatoyance which is kind of the way that it changes um, as you move it in the light. But you get that in wood, too. With some species of wood, you get a chatoyance. And it really is a uh, almost like a, a magical kind of thing, where as you turn it and move it, it just looks different. i got to get in these little rims right here. But it is a, a, a really cool effect. And not all wood does it. Usually figured woods will. Um, let me get one more here. Just to clean this as well as I can. But um, it's great because as you, as you look at the piece from different angles, it, it changes its appearance and just looks amazing. And so this is one of those things where um, the right finish really adds to the chatoyance of the piece if that's something that your piece has a characteristic of. Um, this wood does, uh, figured woods, figured maple. A lot of times, most of your figured or curly woods will have some level of chatoyance to them, depending on the finish that you put on them. But this looks awesome. And I can move this out of the way here in a second. I think this is all done. Like I said, you get these things, you don't want to wait too long to wipe these down because they will get tacky, but this is not. This is very smooth all the way around. And that's what we want. All right. And I got an itchy face, which is not good, but I'm going to take this and bring it over and just kind of show you on camera here the really cool pattern here. And there you can, oh, look at that. You can see. And it just kind of changes as the light changes. The pattern kind of moves and shifts and does things. And um, it gets even better when you put a top coat on here. So, but anyway, that's, uh, that's what we're after. So that's just gorgeous. That's lovely. Um, I need to put this somewhere. So I'm going to grab this paper towel and lift this piece up right here. What do I, ooh, I need an extra one. I need an extra one. Hang on a second. I need to move. Okay. Hang on. These are dry pretty much. So I'm going to move one of these off camera like this. Ah, get off my paper towel. No, there we go. Set this off to the side so it can dry like that. And then I can clean up all this mess so we can move on to our other base over here. Um, all right. Let me clean up all of these paper towels. I just feel like wasting sometimes, but you know what? It is what it is. They serve their purpose. Okay, get this set up. And then let me check this. Looks good and dry. Actually, I probably could have used the little... It's all right. I need to clean my hands off now because I do not want to get tongue oil on this. That will defeat the whole purpose. Although we are going to apply with a brush. Um, so because this is just a regular stain that we're going to put on here, I am going to apply it with a brush. And I'm just going to use a foam brush. But I don't want to get any tongue oil on here that will affect how this stuff lays down. Um, so, anywho. And I'm trying not to rub tongue oil in my eyeball, but it's just, I've got a hair or something hanging down. All right, I also need to get fresh paper towels because we need them to wipe off the stain that we're getting ready to lay down here. So I've got a fresh roll of my Scott shop towels here. So let's go ahead and peel off a couple of those and we will 
pair them into usable bits. Because remember, I actually have two of these to do, but one of them is drying right now. Actually, you know what? I'll bring that over to this fan. There we go. We're just going to get the inside of that one dry. Uh, you won't watch me do that one. I'll do that one off camera, but that's okay. That's why I, that's why I had these kind of prepared separately so that you could watch both stages of this particular finish. All right, I've got some fresh paper towels here that I will use to wipe things off. Oh, let me uh, pour the rest of this back in here and get rid of this. Okay. And, oh, you know what? Hang on a second. I did think of one thing here. My... Uh, my tongue oil applicator pad, I need to uh, make sure that is spread out. It is thick with tongue oil. All the ones that I just used to wipe off, they're not bad. But the one that it was totally coated with tongue oil, you do not want that wadded up and thrown in the garbage because that's just a thing. You, you, uh, you could start a fire, believe it or not. Especially tongue oil is one of those that uh, natural-based oils if you wad up a towel and you throw it in the garbage, um, it can spontaneously combust. So not something we want. It is not. Wake up the computer again. Anything going on? Wake up, computer. Hello? Okay, my computer says nay nay. There we go. All right. We are going to move on now to the American Walnut. And we are going to take this already dye stained piece of wood here. And we are now going to top coat that with this American Walnut. And hopefully it will be glorious. That's my hope. Hopes and dreams. All right. So you can see the color on here. That's what we're gonna be using. Yes, I do have just a regular foam brush, and uh, I'm going to do the bottom. Maybe I'll do the bottom first, and then we will do the sides. So I'm just going to get this brush loaded up here and just start painting it on. So that's all we're doing. Just loading this thing up. The, the big surfaces like the bottoms and stuff, are, are I, I go really fast. Um, I just want to get them covered. But I don't have to be... Like, it doesn't have to be a super thick coating on here. I just need to make sure that it did see some stain. Because, <laughs> like I said, it's the bottom of the box. Anybody who's, like, basing your work on the bottom of it, well, they've got other issues. It's like, well, it looks really nice, but if you look here at the very bottom where you can't normally see, like, exactly, you can't normally see, so stop looking there. Weirdos. Weirdos looking at the bottom of your workpiece. Who does that? It's like you don't look at a painting and then flip it over to see the canvas on the back, right? Nobody does that. I don't think they do. All right. So I'm going to get this all on the bottom. I think I'm going to do the sides here too. It's just easier to do it now. So just put a little bit in there. Get to this one. And the reason I like to do the bottom first is because then I actually have something I can hold onto the box and have a, a little bit more of a secure hold on things. Later on, this would be a little bit more challenging once I've stained everything else. Uh, that looks good. All right. So now that we've got some stain on here, we need to remove that stain. It doesn't have to stay on here really long, at least on this portion. Uh, the other sides that actually are the sides that get seen, um, I typically um, leave it on there for like a minute. But the thing is, as you're painting in sections, by the time you come back to wipe down, it's pretty much been enough time. 
Now I'm just gonna just start swiping this stuff off because that's just how it works. And it will get your towel pretty moist, so you're going to have to flip it pretty frequently. Yeah, there was a little strip scratch mark on this thing. I couldn't get out by sanding, and I didn't want to go too far because then you go through the the bottom veneer layer of the paper, of the um, plywood, and because it's the bottom, I didn't really care. So now I'm going to try to get all of this off of the wood here. I want to make sure I do a good job of removing the stain off of the actual wood. And we're going to get into these corners here and get those cleaned out, and the handles on the side. And get this one over here. We really want these cleaned out. Don't want to leave anything behind. Okay. So now that we've done the, the bottoms, we can move on to the fun parts, which are these sides. And I have to, ah, scratch. Good grief. Itchy today. I think I should have uh, put on more, put on some, lotion after my shower shower in the evening because like I usually take a bike ride in the evening and then I like to shower afterwards because you know I've been riding my bike so I usually shower in the evening and I probably should have put on like you know some body lotion or something after that you know skin care is not just gender exclusive ask Rob Lowe I think he has a whole line of skincare products. But then again, the dude does look like he's like 30 years old. And he's older than me. So, hard to argue with that. All right, let me get the sides here. And this stuff I do lay on pretty thick. Um, I want it to soak in as much as possible. So I try to get a nice thick coat going here. And flip it around. Get another coat on this side. Um, and then I dry these off before I can do the other long side because, well, it would be too hard to try to balance this in my hand. But that looks pretty good. All right. Set that there and get our, well, let's see if I got a clean side I can use on this one. A little bit, a little bit on here. All right, I'm just going to go for the long side here, and this will make this pretty much. <sighs> so that's what we're after. We're just doing this. We do the, the one coat, and then we do this stain over top. Now this, in the logo, I'm going to give this some extra wiping here just to kind of soak up any extra that's set in there. There we go. All right, I need to move on to another paper towel here. There we go. Ooh, that looks so cool. Very cool looking. All right. Same thing here. Just wipe these off. Just trying to get, as you can see, I'm pulling off like all the stain that's set on top. Basically, whatever's in the wood now is in the wood. Ooh, that looks so good. So good. All right, let me flip this around, get this side. And then get a little finish here. And then I can actually show you, I think, because I haven't done this backside yet, right? So I can show you the difference um, on camera. Let me flip this over. I need to hold this with a towel now because I'm getting, I've got stain on my fingers and I'm, I'm re-imparting re stain back into the wood, which I don't want to do once I wiped it down. So let me, I've got a paper towel now to hold it with. 
All right. So let me uh, just come over here and give you a, a view. So now you can see, hopefully you can see that. I'm trying to get you a nice color. There we go. So much darker, right? Much darker. Here's what we started with was this. So you can see that's much lighter. Put that other stain on there, gets much darker. But those medullary rays are still popping and they're still kind of a golden color, right? So there you go. Look at that. That's cool. That's what I'm after. That's a very, very much of a, a kind of like an antique finish, if you will. Um, but very appropriate for the machines that get set into these, um, into these bases because they're, well, they're vintage to be nice, antique to be, you know, I don't know if that's nice to call something an antique. Um, some people prefer their vintage. I don't know what the difference is between vintage and antique. I do know in the state of Virginia, if your car is 25 years old, it's classified as an antique. Which is really weird to think that a car that is, what, made in 1996 is an antique. And the nice thing about that is you can get a special antique plate and then you don't have to get it inspected and like not, not like emissions inspected and stuff. So, which is kind of cool. All right, wipe this off. That looks spectacular. For lack of a better word, we're just gonna go with spectacular. That looks really nice. This all wiped down. Whoo, that's pretty. That's pretty, I do like that. All right, and uh, now, I'm going to check this to make sure I didn't leave any stain on the outside of it. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go where the logo is that I put in here. I'm just going to give this area another rubbing. Just to make sure that all the... I want that to stand out. So you can see, there you go. Because that pretty much... That's what I like about the carving is even though I do just one stain, I don't have to paint that like a dark color and then sand off the outside areas because it's kind of rough in those areas that gets carved. It soaks up more stain and they just pop out darker than the surrounding wood. So it's really my favorite way to do that on stuff that gets stained dark. Okay, now I can set it up on the blocks here, up on the little painting pyramids and we can start doing the interiors. So load up the brush and just do the plywood at the bottom. Um, I don't even get special plywood. This is just um, birch, birch plywood. I mean, it's more I guess it's more special than the, uh, you know, the, just the construction grade ply, but it's pretty simple and pretty affordable in terms of plywood goes, because I don't really see the need to spend a ton of money on the bottom of the box. So it's nice enough that it has some decent grain and accepts stain and doesn't, it's not blotchy or anything, but um, I don't spend a fortune, like I wouldn't go buy you know, like, oh, red oak plywood or, you know, uh, maple plywood or walnut plywood just to match the box. You can buy those things, but dang, are they expensive. And you, you know what you're paying for is just one thin veneer on top of regular plywood. And honestly, this is a part that nobody sees. So who cares? That's my philosophy. Who cares? Who Scatters. Not me. All right, let me get these inside walls painted up here. I always find this to be kind of a pain in the rear to do, um, which is why I like these kind of shorter brushes too. At least I can kind of fit them in here. And I usually try to load them up with a little bit of paint just to get a nice thick coat on there. Okay. 
ah, and I usually end up dragging my finger across the painted areas and getting like stain on my fingers. It's kind of a pain. Now I will go across these as well. So I'm kind of going across the grain just to try to get this seated into all the nooks and crannies that I can. Like I said, this is the inside, not nearly as important as the outside, but still, you know, want it to look nice. All right, and then the last thing I will do once I get this wiped out is I will do the top. Um, I usually save that for last. So let me go ahead and get this up like this. I'm gonna grab another one that I can use to hold the base with and not get anything there with my fingers. Um, I do probably have some stain on my fingers, but if I just do it like this, that gives me a nice solid surface to hold on to while I clean this out. And you can see from the time that I started painting the bottom to the time that I'm actually getting ready to wipe, it's been a couple of minutes, which is more than enough time for stain to penetrate and do its job. Um, I've never had an occasion where I needed to spend five minutes waiting for stain before wiping it off. Um, I, I guess there's some stains that recommend that, but I've never had one that I've needed to do that with. So, <clears throat> ugh, this one, pretty soaked. Yeah, don't know that I have any clean areas left. There's one clean area right here. Try to get this. But anyway, this is a very cool effect. If you've never done something like this, it's very cool. You don't have to, you know, go get yourself some Lockwood special or whatever. You can use regular dye stains. I mean, in, by regular, I mean, there's a lot of different dye stains that people use for wood. Uh, um, leather dyes, um, writ dye, not as great, but it, you can use it. Um, which, you know, is a fabric dye, but there's a lot of stains that people use. You don't have to go spend big bucks on a stain, on a dye stain, um, if you just wanna try something out. Um, after a while, you'll, you, you might wanna spend some money on some good stains, um, but stains can come in a, a concentrated liquid or a powder form, like this Lockwoods comes in a powder, but I also have dye stains that are a concentrated liquid where you just put a few drops in with your like alcohol or water, depending on which carrier you want to use. Um, water gives you more working time to spread stuff around. Uh, alcohol dries faster. So if you want to get, get it dried so that you can like sand something off or whatever, then use an alcohol base. Um, there's no, I don't think there's a right or a wrong. Most of them work well in both scenarios. So at least the ones I've used. Um, the uh, concentrated dyes that I use are from, um, what is it, Transtent. I think they may have powdered dyes too. So you can look them up. They're available on Walmart and uh, Woodcraft and, um, you know, most woodworking places. Um, you could probably find those dyes. All right, I need to do the tops here. So let's get these really well soaked in. That, that's lovely. Same here. Get a lot of dye in there, or not dye, a lot of stain. I get those terms mixed up. Well, it's dye stain, and then there's regular stain. Like this is, I think this is an oil-based stain. I'm pretty sure this is an oil-based stain. But when it comes to top coating, it doesn't matter because I let them totally cure and dry. And then when you get ready to do like a lacquer finish, even if I was gonna do a poly finish, it wouldn't matter. I could do any finish I wanted to on there. Um, some people will actually do a shellac coat over top, which kind of seals in the color. It's a seal coat or a sanding coat, which also works well. Now I have, drip right there that I want to get to. There we go. Make sure there's no other big drips here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get stain out of the brush and I'm just going to go around the corner. Make sure that this whole top edge 
Got a nice coat on it. Then I can start wiping it all off. But uh, yeah, so, you know, if you haven't done it before, it's kind of a cool thing. Um, the uh, if you if you want to deal with maple or whatever, and you want to color maple, getting a color on maple is really hard. There's two real good ways to do it. One is to have it mixed into your top coat. So you're actually not coloring the wood, you're coloring the top coat that goes on top. So like you can you can tint your lacquers. And I actually have some lacquer that's tinted up. So if you want to spray tinted lacquer, um, you can do it that way. So like a lot of guitar finishes and such um, that are maple tops, they don't, they're not necessarily staining the maple, they're, they're staining the lacquer that they use. Um, or you can use the dye stain directly on the wood, which soaks into the fibers. And that looks really good. All right, this is pretty much done. Wow, that looks really nice. I am not going to lie, this is not that bad. Um, kind of funny, I kind of knocked these little bases out pretty quick here. Uh, you all keep me on, on course, I will say that. By doing them on the stream, it's not like I can slack off. i got to have things to do, right? So this is keeping me on course and really helps me to uh, get these projects done. So thank you for that, my live stream folks. All right, now before I finish this, I'm gonna turn it and look at the sides and make sure that I've gotten all the stain off of here so I don't have any runs or drips or anything. And you can see I'm holding it with a paper towel right here because I don't want anything that might be on my fingers to get on there. And this is our finished product. So, um, you know, there's my medullary rays. They kind of pop through. You notice how they're, they're maintaining that amber, that golden oat or maple stain they kind of maintain that and pop through that top coat of medium walnut stain that we use. So that's, that's the whole point of that. There you go, a really pretty shot of it right there. That's the whole point of that, is to get color on there. What time is it? 12.30. Um, to get color on there and then we can uh, go over top of that with a I won't say a contrasting color, but it was something that, why, why are you gonna make me do this? Dang it. Makes me put my password in there. I could use my fingerprint, but I'm gloved up. So I'm gonna turn this over to that one. And uh, yeah, I still have the other one to go. It's still drying in front of a fan and I need to get it done. But I really, it's like, okay, well, there's this one. What do I do with the next one? Um, I, I kind of am at a standing point because I don't want to, that one we did before, I want to make sure it's completely dry, which means I probably will not stain that one for about an hour or so. Um, because I want to make sure that that dye stain that we put in there is completely dry, that that wood has no other moisture. So that when it comes time to put the, the medium walnut stain on there, that it, it um, medium walnut American walnut when it comes time to put that American walnut on there that it really has a uh, a nice dry surface to bond to <clears throat> but um, yeah I think that's uh, I, I'm gonna probably call it an early stream today and uh, what time is it 12 oh, so we're almost we'll be just about two hours today which is not too bad they don't all have to be super long streams um, so this weekend, I think what I'm going to do this weekend, I've got a couple things because I'm going to be pretty much finished here and I can't do any lacquering on these for a few days. Um, certainly until next week, I will not be able to do any lacquer on these. I'm going to take this glove off. <laughs> Did you like that? It's like blowing up a party balloon. Um, 
it's kind of the way I, I used to wear gloves at work all the time because I worked in a laboratory setting. So you kind of get accustomed to taking them off. <laughs> and when you wear them for a while, you get all sweaty on the inside. So it's like, what's the best way? For me, I found that the party balloon trick works, but my hands are moist. Um, <clears throat> what was I saying? Oh, so uh, I can't lacquer these until next week, probably. Uh, some of them I could probably get to sooner than others, but I, I like to just do a train. <laughs> so I'll start one and then I'll just start lacquering until I get them all finished. I have eight of them to lacquer. Um, so there's quite a few of them. And I'm hoping these will, will sell well once I get them in the shop. Um, I guess I have, I, well, I had one cancel yesterday. That's a whole other story. I don't want to get into that. I'm not happy about it. But anyway, um, I, I've got, uh, I've, I've still got a few left from the last batch. Um, like three or so left from the last batch. So not many. And then I have these eight that are going to get done. And then I got to figure out what I'm going to do next. So I think this weekend, the first thing on my agenda is to clean my shop because it is, um, it, it, it needs it. I mean, I've basically on the stream these last, I, I've gone from one batch to another batch and no cleaning or straightening out in between. And I have uh, uh, discard bins that are full of scrap that need to be burned. So my burn barrel is going to get filled up and I'm going to go out and torch those. Um, it's nice to have a little bit of land that you can do. That. So I'm on an acre. So that's plenty. Uh, I've got an old 55 gallon drum that I get. You can find them on Craigslist and stuff. And it didn't have toxic stuff in it, which is another thing. You don't want it toxic stuff if it's going to be a burn barrel. But uh, I just go in here and I, I drilled a whole bunch of holes all the way around it just to get air flowing in there. And then I take all my scrap wood that is basically just not usable for projects or anything. And I'll take all that scrap wood and dump it in there and poof, make a fire till I get rid of all that stuff. Um, so that's the easiest way for me to get rid of the scrap wood. And like I said, I have three bins of scrap that are for the burn pile right now. So I need to take care of that. I need to completely dust and clean out my shop. Um, besides the fact that the spiders, it's summertime and they've, you know, certainly made their presence known. I hate spiders. Um, I need to just give everything a wipe down and uh, a clean off and get myself back into a more organized state because right now, not so much. I mean, things are getting done, but it's, it's, I can tell that it won't be long till stuff goes off the rails here. So I, I need to get things kind of back in shape here and get my shop back into a usable state. I, I honestly, I, I have like this much space right here. What you see here where my computer is, that's like how much space I have on my workbench. Cause I've got so much garbage just from one end to the other. Um, sanding pads and everything else. And it's just time to just fill up the garbage bins and clean up because every now and then you just need to purge and I do need to purge. So I think that's how I'm going to spend some of my time this weekend is purging. Um, uh, Tuesday, this past Tuesday, I went to the uh, hardwood dealer and picked up some wood and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with some of that stuff, but probably make, make some more, um, probably going to make some more, uh, whatchamacallit, more bases. Uh, I've got a couple of requests for like the, I made 301 bases. It's, it's a type of machine I've got. It's the one I was just talking about a little bit while that has the uh, maple and the walnut with the uh, really nice, uh, dovetail joints and everything. So I've had a couple of people asking me if I have those in a regular wood, <laughs> not the, the contrasting woods. So I might look at maybe doing one or two of those in the, uh, the white oak piece that I got. I don't know. I need or maybe some cherry. I just do a regular cherry one. I've got a ton of cherry. So I might do a couple of those in cherry and I might, uh, I might do some other stuff. I, I don't know. I need to make a sign for my folks because their wedding anniversary is coming up. And, um, I told them that I would make this really cool sign for them for their anniversary. And uh, I'm trying to think uh, it's next month. And I, I wrote it down here somewhere. 
Not there, not there, not there, not there. I know I wrote it down. Where? Oh, come on. I know I wrote it down. Hmm. I know I made a thing for it. Anyway, their anniversary is next month. I don't even know which anniversary it is. It's, it's been a long one, though. They've been married for like 60 years. And so, you know, you want to make sure that you, you, you look at things like that that are important and take care of it. So I, that's weird. Um, oh, that, why does it say I have an ultrasound appointment then? It's so very strange. Uh, anyway. Um, so I, I've got that project to make, which will be, I'm thinking I want to use some of that, um, hickory that I got and maybe do inlays. So do like, a um, uh, <clears throat> I've got some, some scrap walnut and I might do some walnut inlays and hickory for the letters. And I think that might look really cool. So, you know, I might try something different other than just making bases. Um, but uh, we'll see. Uh, I'll give it some thought this weekend and we'll kind of pick up from there and move forward and, you know, see what's what. So anyway, um, Friday, go have yourselves a good weekend. Do something fun. Do something interesting. You know, get outside a little bit if you can. Um, by the way, Delta variant, it's a thing. Get your shot if you haven't had it. Come on. Get your shot. I've had mine. Nothing horrible happened to me. I haven't grown horns or antlers or a tail. I feel fine. It doesn't change your DNA. I'm sorry, don't get it political. But it does. It doesn't change your DNA. My brother thinks it does. It does. Anyway, get your shot. Be safe. Wear your mask if you need to. If you haven't had it, please, please wear your mask and take care of yourself. Don't get sick and don't make others sick. Because doggone it, the only way we're going to get past this totally is if we all just kind of do our part. So do your part. Stay safe. Okay. So you can come back and watch me next week because that would be awesome. Hit the like, subscribe, whatever is appropriate for the con content platform you're on and have a great weekend. I will see you on Monday.